Today we are diving into everything you need to know about relocating to this beautiful coastal city of Victoria, BC. Hi, I'm Ainsley Gower and I'm a local real estate agent here in Victoria. If you are looking to buy or sell here in Victoria, I would love to hear from you. I would love to help you. You can get in touch with me via my contact details listed below. Victoria is known for its mild climate, friendly locals, and a lifestyle that offers modern convenience paired with nature's tranquility. It is not just a place to live, you guys. It is a way to live. You might be drawn to Victoria for its outdoor adventure scene or thriving culinary scene or the city's rich cultural tapestry. And almost any Victorian will agree on the key components that make this city such a great place to live. Access to nature, bike infrastructure, mild sunny weather, and the lifestyle of a mid-sized city. It really doesn't come as that much of a surprise that in November 2023, the Globe and Mail placed Victoria as the top place to live in Canada. So now you've made the decision to move to Victoria. That is a fantastic choice. I highly, highly recommend that you spend some serious time online researching the city's offerings, various neighborhoods, different outdoor activities, hikes, lifestyle. No one is gonna know Victoria like a local that has lived here for many, many years, which is why places like online forums can be little gold mines of information. So one that I like to use is called Reddit. I will link that below for you guys. You're also going to want to spend a lot of time and energy into figuring out what neighborhood you want to live in. And once you get to this stage of the process, I think that this is where it can be invaluable to bring on the services of a realtor who knows the area perhaps one that was born and raised in Victoria, like myself. Key points you're gonna to wanna to consider when researching neighborhoods is proximity to schools or work or activities and access to public transportation. I always recommend to people who are potentially considering moving here that they take a scouting trip out to the city, especially if they've never been here before, to just try and get a first-hand feel of what the different areas can be like. I can certainly help guide and give you some suggestions of areas I think that you should focus on, but it's really helpful to experience those in person. When it comes to home buying, we can book showings at potential properties, and so it'll be really important to get into some of these houses or condos or townhouses, whatever type of product you're looking at, to try and get a sense of what your money is going to get you in different areas. Moving can be really expensive. I had some clients last year that were moving from Vancouver Island to a location in the interior of BC, approximately an eight hour drive away, and they were quoted about $10,000 for their move. That's a lot of money, and although that might be normal in the realm of what moving companies would charge for that type of move, it is a serious expense that you're gonna wanna factor in. I highly recommend that you sit down and compile a list of moving expenses, as that's gonna really prepare you both financially and mentally for the cost that you're going to incur. Some things you're gonna to wanna to consider when you're creating your moving budget is the cost of scouting out the area, house hunting, sightseeing, the cost of moving out of your current property, damage deposit, cleaning costs, commissions on a sale, cost of movers and shipping, especially if you're moving out of the area. At this stage, many of those costs are just gonna be ballpark figures. However, it's still gonna be really helpful to set your expectations of what you're working with with your budget. In Victoria, finding the right place to call home can definitely be a bit of an adventure in itself, but at this stage, you've already done a lot of the grunt work of figuring out which neighborhoods you've narrowed it down to for potential candidates, and now it's just a matter of picking the right property. We have a pretty diverse array of real estate here. You could opt for a cozy condo near a bustling village. You could opt for a single family home 
that's in a heavily wooded area like North Saanich or Broadmead. You could opt for a float home down in the Inner Harbor. If you are focusing on the Victoria core area, that is going to be more established neighborhoods that perhaps have more village hubs. You're going to find these homes have a little bit more character. They're probably going to need a little bit more maintenance because they're a little bit older and they're going to be a little bit more expensive than if you went out to some other areas further out like Langford or Colwood or Machosen or the Highlands or even Souk. Once you start to get out into those West Shore areas, you've got a lot of newer construction happening. You're going to see a lot more townhouses. You're going to see a lot more single family homes that tick boxes of young families three, four bedrooms with a basement and a little bit of a yard, two car garage. So younger families are really veering out that way. Finding the right place to live can take a little bit of time. There is high demand here in Victoria. So your search is probably gonna require some patience, perseverance, and a little bit of strategy. If you're looking to buy here in Victoria, there are a couple things you are going to want to do. Number one is to get a pre-approval. So unless you are paying cash, you are gonna need some mortgage financing. And because of the demand we have in our market and the speed at which it can move, you really wanna get your ducks in a row ASAP. So if you're coming out here on what you believe is just a scouting trip, I highly, highly encourage you to have a pre-approval before you even come out for your scouting trip. That way, if you do fall in love with something and you feel like you're ready to move on it, you're in a position to do that. I also encourage you to create a home buying wish list. You probably have this ideal home in mind, but what are your non-negotiables? It's a really good idea to create a list of your need to have or your must haves and would like to have. You're also going to want to consider the following. What part of town do you want to live in? What price range do you want to stay within? What is the home's school district catchment? That's really crucial. Um, every home in Victoria is going to fall within a school catchment boundary, but you don't want to rely on that 100% because there are some schools with capacity issues. So you're always going to want to verify that prior to purchasing a home just under the assumption that you're going to get into a particular school. You're also going to want to consider if you're willing to do any renovations, what your transportation needs are, how big of a yard you want, how many bedrooms how many bathrooms do you have to have a garage or is it just a would like to have navigating victoria's real estate market is all about timing understanding what you're looking for like truly understanding what you're looking for and being in a position with the ability to make quick decisions and that's where having this pre-approval an official pre-approval in place is really helpful because if something comes up and you like it and it's quality chances are that product is going to move pretty quickly and you need to be in the best most competitive position as possible working with a local real estate agent throughout this process is extremely beneficial if you go to open houses and you are chatting with listing agents, they're only going to be telling you information that benefits their seller. So having somebody on your side who knows what questions to ask in order to protect you is immensely valuable. With the right assistance and a flexible mindset, securing your home here in Victoria is absolutely achievable and it's really the first step in creating your new life here. Finding your new home here in Victoria is really just the beginning. The next thing you're gonna need to do is connect with all of the essentials that make life flow, like schools, daycare, healthcare. Healthcare and finding a family doctor here can be very challenging. I've heard that about other parts in Canada and BC is really no different. But there was an announcement made by BC Health Minister Adrian Dix last week. He announced that 708 more doctors are practicing family medicine in the province this year than last year. The increase in doctors is largely being attributed to the province's new payment plan. I had to do a little bit of research on this because I really couldn't understand why is it so hard to get a family doctor when it seems like it is such an essential healthcare service that Canada should be supplying. 
I didn't understand that doctors are basically like entrepreneurs. They are responsible for paying all of their overheads of their clinics that they run. They have to pay for staff. They have to complete all of this paperwork. And prior to this new policy, they were only getting paid every time they saw a patient. They weren't getting paid for any time that they were spending completing this paperwork versus this new payment plan or policy that they put in place is doctors will now get paid for the amount of work that they do, including the hours that they complete paperwork, which has obviously been helping and we've seen this increase in doctors now. So fingers crossed it only continues to improve because there doesn't seem to be a heck of a lot of incentive for people to go into family medicine these days. It seems like to get on a wait list for a family doctor, you need to already be living in BC. Don't quote me on that. That's just the research I could find online. Maybe there is another way. Uh, once you are living in BC, you can register with the Health Connect Registry to be registered with a doctor or nurse practitioner. When you register, you are added to a list of people in need of primary care providers in your community. Family doctors and nurse practitioners will use their list when they are available to accept new patients. The registration on this website only takes five minutes. You need to provide your personal health number found on your BC services card, your home address, and your email address and phone number. I then tried to find some information for you guys as to how long people are actually having to wait to get a family doctor after they go onto this list. And there was a recent article published by the Vancouver Sun in this month actually, in February 2024, and they shared a story of many BC residents growing frustrated and losing hope as they wait years on the province's doctor registry. Thousands of British Columbians are still waiting according to BC Healthcare Matters. One in five BC residents still don't have a family doctor. I know. I wish I had better news for you guys on that front. On a more positive note, our education system has a very good reputation. We have a really great array of services and institutions that cater to a diverse population. Schools in Victoria are generally good, with the exception of just maybe one that comes to mind, and that is George J. Elementary does not have the best reputation. It's known to be a little bit rough around the edges and kids getting kicked out of classes and having you know a number of incidences every day but at my cousin sends her kid there and I think he's around nine years old and she loves it so I think whether or not a school is actually any good can be a little subjective there are three school districts in the greater Victoria area school district 61 62 and 63 and I've heard there's very little difference between their policies or quality of administration particularly when you can consider that teachers frequently move in between districts. If you need daycare, unfortunately there is not a super streamlined way to figure out what daycares have availability and what their prices are. You basically just have to search daycare, see which ones come up, and then check out their websites, make some email inquiries, make some phone calls. Once you've figured out which daycares might be a good fit for you, then you need to persevere and be really persistent to try to get in. There are new $10 a day daycares in BC. I don't personally know anybody that sends their child to a $10 a day daycare. I feel like it's always friends of friends of friends. So it kind of seems like this little urban legend, but there are some $10 a day daycares. So that may be something that you want to try and look into. Living in Victoria is all about embracing the lifestyle where every day is an opportunity to connect with nature and culture. Whether it's paddling along the coastline, hiking through ancient forests, or experiencing the local art scene. Victoria offers a seamless blend of activities that cater to all. The city thrives on its commitment to sustainability and community. It's a place where your lifestyle choices can reflect a deeper connection to the environment and those around you. Join in on local initiatives, participate in cultural festivals, and enjoy the simple pleasure of coffee at a neighborhood cafe. Moving to Victoria is more than a change of address. It's embarking on a new chapter full of adventure and discovery. Stay tuned for more insights and tips to make your relocation journey as smooth as possible. And don't forget to hit subscribe to stay updated with everything you need to know about living in Victoria.